Good evening and welcome to our last midweek Lent service. We really are glad you are worshiping with us. We do ask that you would remember that um, you still have time to sign up for Palm Sunday services. That will be this coming Sunday. Um, we ask that you are SVP. We also, starting tomorrow, will um, have a sign up for the Monday Thursday picnic. And then next week you can sign up for the Easter service. You can sign up for the Easter services. As our candles are lit in the sanctuary, we ask you now to light or turn on your candle wherever you are worshiping. The candles remind us that the light of Christ is with us wherever and whenever we are worshiping. Keep digging. A Poetry Prayer by Reverend Sarah R. I can feel change inside of me. It's a slow burn. Change usually starts out hot, defensive and angry, a self-righteous blanket of, I am right and here's why. I wrap it around my shoulders like a barricade. I fight the temptation to lean forward, to play the challenger, to argue with confidence. But in time, almost always, the heat fades. The air leaves the balloon. The audacity of it all starts to wear off. And eventually, what I am left with is myself and a big open sky. It's colder here. It's quieter. I can hear my thoughts. And in this big, wide openness, I am able to say out loud, maybe I wasn't right. Maybe I need to learn. Maybe it's time for change. Maybe that's okay. And if I'm quiet, and if I'm paying attention, I can usually hear God whisper inside of me, good work, my child. Now keep digging. You're not sure who you really are. And all you feel is the shape of your scar. You have more wounds than you can count Open your eyes, look all around You aren't alone, this is your home Come and remember who you are here Do this to remember who I am Come and remember 
In the Gospel of John, a group of Greek people approach the disciples and say, we would like to see Jesus. It's a brief, beautiful moment that the text doesn't spend a lot of time on. And yet, it always catches my eye. It catches my eye because the phrase, I want to see Jesus, feels like it should be my constant prayer. Help me see Jesus. I'd like to see Jesus. Bring me closer to Jesus. In the prayer of confession, we take a moment to recognize how much space exists between us and those words, trusting that even when we forget to seek out God, God is seeking us out. So join me in the prayer of confession and we take one more step closer to the divine. Gracious God, we want, we want to, to see, see you. We, we want, want to be known, known as the people who looked, looked for Jesus. Jesus. But, but not, not only that, that we, we want, want to be people who have, have your covenant written on our hearts. hearts. Why do we feel so far away from that at times? What went wrong? Where did we lose our way? Could you, would you, once again, write on our fragile hearts? We would be so grateful. Amen. Friends, despite our wonderings, despite our distractions, despite wrong turns time and time again, we are known and loved by God. Like a lighthouse keeper by the sea, God will never stop waving us home. So hear and believe the good news of the gospel. Our, our fragile, fragile bones are held, are held by, by the, the great, great creator. Our, Our fragile, fragile hearts are, are loved by, by the great, great Creator. Our tender spirits are forgiven by the, by the great, great Creator. Today is a new day. Again, again and again, again we are forgiven. Again and again, we, we are reformed. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, Scripture tells us that your word is written on our hearts, but we struggle to hear it. Is it possible that we have covered up your words with our own self-narratives? Is it possible that we have erased your truth to write our own? Is it possible that we have forgotten your words entirely? Take us back to the beginning. Remove the self-talk that distracts. Clear away the cobwebs of doubt. Show us how to look inside ourselves for your truth, and then write it on our hearts once more. We are listening. We are hopeful. We are here. Speak now. Amen. Amen. The Judeans in Babylon blamed their exile on their ancestors. 
who had broken the covenant established at Sinai. Here the prophet will look to a day when God will make a new covenant with the people. There will be no need to teach the law because God will write it on their heart. The first lesson is from the book of Jeremiah, reading from chapter 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their inequity and remember their sins no more. Written on Our Hearts by Reverend Lauren Wright Pittman. The events of 2020 have made me keenly aware of the brokenness of humanity. We can't seem to see past ourselves, neglecting our neighbor and undoing creation. We repeat past patterns and the low moments of history keep echoing again and again. We point fingers, shrug responsibility, and we turn our back on God, widening the chasm between this world and the coming kingdom. God's frustration and disappointment are palpable in this text. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, from verse 32. I think it's important to sit with that for a bit. God has gifted us everything, our lives, this wonderful world, and we can be so forgetful and ungrateful. Despite humanity's constant breaking of covenants, God continues to seek reconciliation and pours out grace upon grace. Why not let this grace transform us? It is in receiving God's grace, responding in gratitude and offering grace to others that God forms us into who we were made to be. God saves us from ourselves, writing the way on our hearts and gives us unlimited chances to get it right. It's clear we can't keep the covenant on our own. So God steps in offering and fulfilling the covenant at once. What a gift. In this image, I drew an anatomical heart with the words, I will be their God and they shall be my people. The heart is surrounded by covenantal imagery, including the stars Im imaging the vastness of Abraham's descendants, the parted seas on the journey to the land flowing with milk and honey, and the rainbow signaling God's promise to all of creation. It creates a beautiful kaleidoscope of stories that define our pilgrimage with God. The common thread throughout these narratives is that when we mess up, God is ready with a promise again and again. Our discussion questions tonight are, when someone promises you something, how does that affect your relationship with that person? Is it easy to trust that promise? And what covenant from God has been especially meaningful in your faith life and why?
join me in the affirmation of faith. <coughs> we believe <coughs> that flowers need the rain. rain. We believe it is that, that humans, humans need unity. community. We believe, we believe that, that bodies need rest. rest. We believe that hearts need connection. We believe that mornings need sunrise. We believe that seasons need change. We believe that grief needs space. We believe that change needs time. We believe that love needs security. We believe that pain needs art. We believe that joy needs company. We believe that our spirits need God. Again and again, our spirits need God. Fortunately for us, we trust that God is here. God is at work in our lives. God is a lighthouse keeper that never gives up. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please pray with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As you leave this space, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. May your arms hold those in need. May your feet walk toward justice. May your heart trust its worth. May your soul dance in God's grace. And may this be your rhythm again and again and again until God's promised day. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself. Go with courage, go with heart, go in peace. Amen. Amen.
just wish that we could sleep we want to close our eyes we're not who we